Belshir vested. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. As we get ready for this, in the bottom right-hand corner of Belshir Vestige, it is the Blue Zerg Gamma Bear Sin. Wee. <laughs> Not on the sticks this time, but we are still just as excited as we were the uh, other day. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> I, I, never mind. I'm not even going to go over it. Top left-hand corner, the evil genius Protoss. He is red and he is Huck. And Huck. He's hot, hot, hot. He's red, hot, hot. Man. Huck seems to be going for the gateway first. Andre here against Sen. This is such a classic matchup, man. Yeah. Huck and Sen are two players that are, of course, uh, I would say massively successful throughout the entire Wings of Liberty period. So far in Heart of the Swarm, Huck has not been super successful yet, but he's definitely on the rise. Look at his um, results in the recent Red Bull Battlegrounds. That was just crazy, man. Huck 3 0 in Illusion, 3 0 State. Losing against Snoot twice, but also able to defeat TLO 3 to 1, mm -hmm. making himself the runner up of the Red Bull Battlegrounds. That was the best Huck we've seen in a very, very long time. You know, it's really interesting because I feel like everybody, uh, I'll blatantly say it, craps on Huck so much. I thought you were going to um, say everybody clap. <laughs> Uh, no, but everybody like just does not give Huck enough credit. This guy, you know, he he gave up his life. He moved over to Korea. He's been training so hard, and he has a pretty good. I mean, for a foreigner, he has a pretty good win rate against Koreans. He continuously is he continuously is on top of I guess the foreigner list in terms of quality of play, but people just don't give it to him. People just don't say yes. He is the premier player, and I, I kind of feel like that has something to do with his style. I really do. People call, classify it as a little bit cheesy, a little bit aggressive, but then you look at players like Jim, and I almost feel like Huck is the same style as Jim. Uh, to some degree, yes, man, Andre, and I of course completely agree with you. I think Huck deserves more credit than what's been given to him. Um, we can talk about it, we can speculate why that is, but for now I'd say let's just focus on this game, because what I do know is that we are both quite Huck fans. I always enjoy casting Huck. I think he's awesome. Andre, 3 minutes and 15 seconds up to the point where uh, Sen decides to go 3 base. If uh, Sen is able to survive and go through the early phase of this game without taking any initial damage, well, we do see Hawkron boosting out this Stalker. If he follows this up with another Stalker, this Overlord is D-E-A-D -E in the water. Uh, it's going to delay that second Stalker for a bit, because actually there is no safe spot here between <laughs> both bases if there are two Stalkers up. Yeah, we'll see oh, if he's gonna find this Overlord though, and this is one that he can get for sure without uh, too much hassle, I guess. It's a more important Overlord, Unless, I would say, no, too. I guess he's safe over here. Um, the reason why I say this is the more important Overlord is because uh, you already know as a Protoss exactly where the first Overlord is coming mm. from. You have a, a direct spot, so you can kind of position your, your Overlords accordingly. That Overlord, just because it's weak, it means it doesn't have the ability to push into uh, the Protoss base at, you know, that six, seven minute mark where you really need to establish what tech your opponent is going. So I actually think that's pretty big. I'm a little bit worried for Hawk already, though, because he's going Gateway first, which is less economic than a Forge Fast Expand. These two links are going to be able to run into the main base. There will be a Sentry and a Mothership Core. But above all, this is not a very economic opening for him. He needs to follow this up with some serious pressure, and we do see actually that Warp Gate technology is already 75 to 80 percent done. This is really important because Hawk is going to have to slow Sand down. If he would not do anything against this super quick tree, a tree built from Sen, Sen is just going to go so far yeah. ahead in the work account up to a certain point in the game where it's going to be absolutely insane. Hawk's going to be able to pick up this Overlord, and we can already see Pylon going up as well. Hawk needs to do the damage with his little push. You know, this is actually pretty perfect, I would say. I mean, he's doing three gate pressure. He has the recall uh, capabilities. I'm a little bit worried, though, because he doesn't have too much DPS right now. I think he might end up losing the sentry. He's going to oh. have to drop a force field. He needs fine. Oh, needs no, probes. don't attack no. your gateway, Hawk. He needs probes to be pulled. Oh, he has a second sentry. Okay. Easy peasy. No worries, guys. Um, he's going back with these units while he does have this pylon already. We can see yeah. this is buying more and more time for Sen. More and more links are on the way. We have 33 drones right now. Sen is going back to droning. This could be a small mistake if but Hawk decides to commit to his gateway pressure. Keep in mind, metabolic boost has been almost completed now. That's a big problem. Sen was super greedy with this. Three hatch and then a gas. That is incredibly greedy. And then he gets the spawning pull. That way he can get metabolic boost out as fast as possible. If this was just a straight up four gate, a big, big problem would be had here. But uh, oh, I, I feel like he's doing a good job. 
defending his pylon over here, and he will be able to amass quite a sizable army. We're gonna have a lot of zealots right now from Hawk on this side of the map. There are not too many links out. These zealots do not have plus one, so they are not as scary as they normally are. Mm -hmm. But it's still pretty damn scary. It's six, seven zealots right now, and a mothership core. Sen is gonna have to pull drones in a certain moment, and he's gonna have to dance back and forth. He has a lot of links on the way. It should be enough. If Sen survives this phase of the game without taking too much damage, he's going to be in a fantastic oh, position. Oh man, but one, two queens are already gonna drop. Huck is targeting the right units yep. at this point and just making it so uncomfortable because remember, if you keep that mothership alive, you empower your army so much with that recall. Uh, it's gonna be really close, but he will be able to pick up this queen as well. That means no NTR for a little while over here. And sure, these links, they are cleaning up the gateway units, but not before losing three queens and losing a couple of drones, or actually more than just a couple of drones. Take oh, a yeah. look, Hawk already killed 10 drones. This is what Hawk needed, and Hawk has done it. Beautiful play by Hawk. Oh, look at this. And he's actually trading out Zealots for, for, uh, for Zerglings. Such an intelligent position right now because it really empowers. Think, if you have less Zerglings to deal with, you want to drone up. All of a sudden, those two sentries in the back can actually defend against all of these Zerglings, whereas before, he would have had to get more gateway units. And remember, Huck is tech switching over to not only Stargate tech, but also Twilight Council tech. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how quick he did that up on each other. So I'm starting to feel perhaps the two base timing, Andre, because getting Twilight and oh, Stargate yeah. now already, taking a look at the work count of Hawk, he's on 46. That's a really healthy amount to go two bases, but he's still producing probes, so perhaps I'm wrong. Interesting follow-up here by Hawk. I really like the damage he did. That was great, picking up three queens, all those drones, but he didn't kill the hatchery, and that mm -hmm. does worry me a little bit. Yeah, because, well, I said this a lot, um, you know, each each hatchery, if you perfectly inject it, on average, it's 9.3 larva per minute. And a dark shrine, what? What a bizarre follow-up here. Normally, we're expecting blink stalkers, right? Like, that's yep. the number one thing you're thinking. Because he's already forcing out spore crawlers with these phoenixes. Exactly, like, it's so redundant. Maybe he's going mm -hmm. for a zealot, zealot archon? But yeah, I mean, it's something that still uh, can work, because often there's only one spore per base, and then suddenly if you're able to surprise your opponent, you, can yeah. get, uh, you can kill that spore. Then you also your phoenixes are able to pick off perhaps an overseer, so it can definitely work, but I'm very curious to see how Hawk is going to try to make this work, because it's a really big investment. Yeah, it's probably going to be like multi prong aggression, definitely a, a lot of Dark Templars uh, darting into the main base, I'm thinking, just as a tactical ploy, because you can't actually see those Dark Templars on the minimap, and then directly after that, he's pressuring the third base, but he is warping in all the way on the right-hand side. This is a very interesting build, and we haven't seen really, uh, you know, a, an unconventional style coming out from Sen. He's going up to Hydras. This is going to counter the Phoenixes pretty well. And potentially the and Archons the, Yeah, as well. and the Archons and the Zealots, of course. Zealots yep. get shredded to Hydras. So, so actually, every gateway unit gets shredded yeah. to to uh, Hydras, unless you have really, really good force field. So this it, is really interesting to me. I agree, Andre. This Hydra uh, transition might actually be a bigger problem than the fact that, yes, there are a couple of spores here and there, but these could still be uh, useful, but other than that, these Hydras are good against every single unit that Hawk is able to make yeah. right now. Sure, if you have an overwhelming amount of charge slots, you might be able to uh, catch these Hydras off guard, but Sen's economy is starting to be pretty damn good. He might be able to get oh. a Phoenix over here. Yes, he will. And I'm wow. quite worried. I don't think that uh, Hawk is very happy with seeing that amount of Hydra list already. Definitely not. He is getting charged. He warped in four Dark Templars and merged them immediately into Archons. So he's obviously telling me that he's doing a two base all in. And with, you know, with time warp, he can definitely be good. I think Huck was waiting for that fourth base to go up, but now he's taking a third base. I think he realizes, hey, a lot of my all ins have just been removed off the field because of those Hydra lists. If he's still on creep, it's going to be a disaster for me to really push. So let me try to focus more economically, get unless my third base to lead. No, I must. No. I want to say unless it's a fake, but definitely yeah. not with two photon overcharge over here or two photon cannons. This is a 13 minute third base though. That's pretty damn late. Yes, Hawk did a fantastic amount of damage early on, but if you don't follow it up, then you know, within a minute, the Zerg mm -hmm. is able to reproduce those drones, reproduce the queens, and Zerg is still up one base. And I'm, af I'm afraid that the damage that you did a little bit earlier is just going to be oh, sort yeah. of completely neglected in this phase of the game because it doesn't really matter oh, anymore. And look at that. Roaches. 17 of them, Andre. I, I hit, like, I play this style a lot. I do a non Colossus style. Sometimes I get immortal, sometimes I don't, but I try to rely on charge slots because they're just so 
lean in minerals and you can use your gas anywhere else. And I have to say roaches are the direct counter. That sounds crazy, right? Well, roaches are the direct counter to everything, but they're definitely the direct counter to this style in particular because those roaches soak up so much damage. And on top of that, they cost so little. And they deal quite a bit of damage as well. That's a couple right. of phoenixes trying to fly in over here, pick up this queen over here at the fort base. Um, I'm kind of worried about the position that Huck is in right now. He doesn't have anything that's very good against Roach Hydra. That's just the way it is. He doesn't have Storm. He doesn't have Colossus. Mm -hmm. uh, Void Rays, you know, could be good in some degree if you're able to protect them and just kill the Phoenixes. That doesn't work either. He does have three Dark Templars right now sneaking into the main base. And this actually might be the start of a yeah. great attack for Huck. Yes, At the sir. same time, we can see he's moving his main army, but he's actually running into the main force of sand, but these Dark Templars should be able to deal Ooh. crazy amount of damage. I love that time warp right now. Now the main base is under ridiculous oh. attack. Nice force fields. Going to trap those roaches in. Those Archons do an incredible amount of damage. But Sen not committing to any place. He's probably... No, he's not even walking back here. What is so many drones already? Hawk went from 13 to 32 by now. Oh, Killed holy over crap. 20 workers. That is incredible, and of course, everything will be cleaned up momentarily. Was that enough, though? You know, uh, even though that did a lot of damage... Oh, Hawk, you, Hawk. I'm, I'm gonna say that it wasn't enough. Mm, I kind of like this. This definitely slows down Sen a lot. I don't think Sen is able to take a bad fight right now. So I don't think Sen wants to take a fight. I don't think Hawk has to fight. No, he, on, sh he absolutely shouldn't. And I think he's just sharking around right now. He wants to make it known that you shouldn't be doing anything risky. But the Vipers are going to really punish you so hard. Killing those Archons just give you the ability to keep pushing forward. The Dark Templar back into the main base. But we're going to see... Sen just march across the map and potentially just kill that third base. That's a huge, huge problem. I am not sure if Sen is in that position. He's on 104 supply right now. This this last fight was a little bit sloppy by Hawk because he didn't need to fight in that moment. But we have the Robos on the way. The first Immortal is okay. on the way. Four additional Archons. Uh, on a certain uh, point, I'm afraid it might get a little too much because Archons, they kind of block each other. Yeah. I don't really see seven Archons being able to fight against all these Hydras, but I still really like the way that Hawk set it up. He was able to pick off so many units over here. Those Dark Templars did a crazy amount of damage, but I would really love to see one or two Colossus, despite the Vipers. Yeah, the Vipers are scary, but Sen is not that rich. Yeah, and here we go. The engagement's going to start here. Everything gets cleaned up. I mean, you want your Zealots to be tanking everything. Now the Archons are the ones that will really be gunned down here. Sentries will be taken out as well with the Guardian Shield, which is so helpful, but not anymore. And then Mortal comes in a little bit late to the party. I have to agree with you. I feel like the Mortal and the Archon are a little bit redundant in this army oh. against Roach Hydra. Well, Sen doesn't have a massive economy, but what, uh, what he does have is a massive army. Look at this, 105 mm -hmm. army supply. I'm sure that Huck doesn't feel that he's facing uh, that much of an army deficit right now, but that is the truth. Uh, Sen is close to being maxed out. And he's going to be a pick up a Phoenix over here for free as well. Uh, there are no, There is one Overseer over here. This, this oh, is a really expensive gosh. loss right now yeah. for Huck. That was, I believe, six Dark Templars, and there it is. GG, Huck will tap out of first game. Man, I really love parts of 